Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to New Zor Education. Um, let me address another uh, aspect of vector product. Actually, in this particular case, it would be a combination of scalar and vector product. I'm talking about this particular expression. So first, we have vector product of vectors B and C, and then we have a scalar product of vector A by the result of B uh, times C. So, the first thing which I would like to prove is the following. Um, that um, you see, let, let me start from the second part of this lecture. The second part of this lecture is that if you have three vectors like this, let's say this is A, this is B, and this is C. Well, you can always build uh, a parallelogram based on B and C, right? something like this. And now let's build a parallelepiped based on, on the A as, as a, the third dimension. Okay, do you see this parallel pivot? These are vertical uh, edges, and this is a horizontal plane, B and C. So, the result uh, of this particular lecture is that this particular expression actually is a volume of this parallel pivot, which is not obvious, obviously. Um, but now what I would like actually to say is that we will have exactly the same result here as if we will change the order. So instead of A times BC, we can have uh, BA and the C as a, as, a, uh, as, as a third dimension. Or we can have uh, from A to C and B as, as the third dimension. So this purely algebraic expression um, can be proven using the coordinate representation of vector and scalar product. But geometry is basically the base for this thing, because no matter how you calculate it, you will still get the volume of this particular figure. So that's the reason. So I don't want to give you, okay, let me prove this, and just say nothing and start putting some formulas, etc., etc. What's important is that this is a representation of the physical aspect of the vector and scalar product. So, but let me start with this one. Um, let's say let's say the first the, the first equality. Now, B has uh, uh, certain coordinates. Let's say A is A1, A2, A3. B is B1, B2, B3, and C is C1, C, C, C2, C3. So B times C. Uh, I I was just deriving in the previous lecture um, the coordinate representation of this thing. Um, and uh, uh, let me recall. So it's, uh, I think it's B2, C3 minus B3, C2, comma, uh, then the second is B3, C1 minus 
B1, C3 for the second coordinate, and the third coordinate would be uh, B1, C2 minus B2, C1. I think that's how uh, the three coordinates of the B times C would look like. Now, if you multiply it by A, which is A1, A2, A3, you have to multiply each one correspondingly on A1, A2, and A3, and add them together. So that's what it is. Now, if you do exactly the same thing with this or this, uh, just changing the B and C and A places, you will have exactly the same result. And I don't want actually to spend much time on this, quite frankly. Um, maybe in one particular case. Um, well, let's say this one. Uh, so B and A would be uh, B2, A3 minus B3, A2, comma, B3, A1 minus B1, A3, comma, and B1, A2 minus B2, A1, that's the vector product, and multiplied by C1, C2, and C3, and add them together. So uh, let's think. A3, B2, C1. A3, B2, C1. Uh, the only difference is uh, I have a different sign here. But maybe I'm wrong with this one. Let me check. Uh, from A to B, from B to A, you get C. How about this? A2, B3, C1. A2, B3, C1. Yes, it's all uh, different signs, so I have to do A times B here. That looks better. In which case, I will have different signs. Because vector product is anti commutative. Now I have exactly the same, right? A3, B2, C1 with a minus. A3, B2, C1 with a minus, right? Uh, A2, B3, C1 with a plus. A2, B3, C1 with a plus. Now, A1, B3, C2 minus. A1, B3, C2 minus, right. Um, A3, B1, C2, A3, B1, C2 with a plus here and here, fine. And the third one is A2, B1, C3 with a minus. A2, B1, C3 with a minus, right. And A1, B2, C3 with a plus. A1, B2, C3 with a plus, correct. So everything is fine. Now, and the same will be the, with, with uh, another equality. So this part is easy. The only thing is, make sure you don't mix the signs. All right. So um, we have proven this. So the only thing which I have to prove right now is that this represents the volume of this parallelepiped. Now, I would like to, to tell you, although it looks like an orthogonal basis, like x, y, and z, they are not. They are not orthogonal to each other. There is no 90 degree angles here. It's general, which means here you might be less than 90 degree and here, which means that um, uh, it, it, it's not a this is not a rectangle, and these are not rectangles. These are all parallelograms, and the whole figure is called parallelepiped. Now, what's the volume of the parallelepiped? Well, 
as in many cases of, of, like this, it's the uh, area of the of the base times the altitude. Now, what is the base? Base is parallelogram, and the area of the base we know it from the properties of the vector product is the vector product of these two vectors with an absolute value optimism. So the area of the base is equal to absolute value of b times c vector product. Why? Again, uh, it's multiplication of length of this times length of that times the sine of the angle, right? But if you have a parallelogram, now this is a flat on this surface, so it's b and c, and this is perpendicular, this is phi. Well, obviously, that the altitude of the parallelogram is length of this, which is, let's say, c or b, it doesn't matter, times the sine of this angle. And that's exactly what vector product is, right? Vector product is the length of the b times the length of the c times the sine of the phi, of the angle. Right? So we are considering a simple case that angle is measured in the correct direction, so it's positive, actually. If you want, you can put it this way. That it would be always correct. So this is the area of the parallelogram at the base. So, you see? That's what it is. That's good, right? So we have an area. But now, the area, is, as a vector, is multiplied by a vector A as a scalar product. Now, what is a scalar product? Well, let's remember that if you have a scalar product of two vectors, then it's the U times V, length of the V, times the cosine of the angle between them. And angle, I mean the angle, the shortest distance less than 180 degrees. So that's why it's um, like this. Now, uh, what else? Well, you can put absolute value as well, just in case so you don't really have uh, any problem with the direction of the angle you're measuring. Okay. All right. Now, let's talk about vector A and this particular plane, which is defined by B and C. Let's draw a perpendicular from A down. This is the altitude. This is the altitude um, of the parallelogram. Now, what is B times C as a vector product? Well, this is the absolute value of this, but as a vector, what is this? Well, you remember that this is uh, the vector which is perpendicular to both of them, right? So it's somewhere here. This is B times C. This is vector product of B and C. Now, what is the angle between A and B times C. Let's call it let's call this angle phi. So the scalar product of A and the result of the vector product of B and C is equal to length of the A, length of the length of the A, length of the B times C, and the cosine of this angle phi, right? Uh, angle phi. Now, obviously, it's exactly the same as this angle. Why? Because from this point, we have a perpendicular to the plane, and from this point, we drop the perpendicular to the plane. 
So these two perpendiculars are parallel to each other, obviously, because they're both parallel to the uh, both perpendicular to uh, to the plane. So what is in this case a times cosine? So instead of u and v, I will use now b and a and b and c. So it's a. And this is b times c. So this is a, and this is b times c. Right? So a times cosine of phi. a, length of the a, times cosine of this angle. That's exactly the altitude. Because this is the length from the point to the plane. We drop the perpendicular. So here, when we were building our vector product, we put the perpendicular up to the plane, and here we just drop the perpendicular down. That's why these angles are the same, and that's why the, the angle, the cosine of angle between A and B times C is exactly the same as the cosine of the angle between A and the altitude, which means that this this and this together is an altitude. Now this, B times C, is an area of the parallelogram at the base. And that's why we have this particular formula. So we have the area of the base, which is this, and the combination of these is an altitude of our parallelogram. That's it. That's the end of the story. And obviously, if you change the orientation of this, if you start with, let's say, A and, and B as, as a base, and, and, and C as, as a third dimension, or if you do, uh, let's say, uh, A and C as a base, and B as a third dimension, that's why you have all these A times scalar uh, product of, uh, vector product of B and C is exactly the same versus you, uh, 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 regardless of whether you multiply A scalarly by vector product of B times C or B scalarly by A times C, etc. So the only thing is you have to really watch the sign but, uh, because the orientation. But if you are talking about volumes and areas, you always have these absolute value of, 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 the, of the lengths, and uh, these do not have actually any negative uh, values anyway. Well, that's it. That's a... Uh, Short and in, in, in interesting, I would say, uh, story about vector and uh, and scalar product from geometrical standpoint. So the vector product is an area of the parallelogram defined by these two vectors, and if you multiply it by the uh, another vector in the third dimension as a scalar product, you will get the volume of the parallelepiped formed by these three vectors. I hope it was interesting. So anyway, that's it for today. Thank you very much, and good luck.